Isentropic efficiency is defined as the real performance of a real device relative to the theoretical isentropic performance. The performance can be the input or output depending on what we are calculating. And since we call it efficiency, it means that we are going to be calculating a number between 0 and 1. In the case of a turbine, a real turbine produces less work than an isentropic one, and therefore the isentropic efficiency is the work produced by a real turbine over the work produced by its isentropic counterpart. In the case of a compressor or a pump, we know that the work of an isentropic compressor or pump is the very minimum idealized value, and that a real compressor or pump would require more work than that. Therefore, to obtain a number between 0 and 1, we basically invert the terms we just mentioned for the efficiency of a turbine. The isentropic work would go in the numerator, and the real work would go in the denominator. Let's look at these two in more detail. For a turbine, we define the work rate as the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy H1 minus H2. We know that both enthalpy and entropy are functions of temperature, and that an increase in temperature causes an increase in enthalpy and entropy. This means that if we were to plot enthalpy against entropy for an ideal gas in the superheated region, the enthalpy increases as the entropy increases or vice versa. And since enthalpy is directly related to pressure, we know that this relationship shows a higher curve for a high pressure and a lower curve for a low pressure. Starting anywhere at 1, we can easily see that for an isentropic case, the process would be a vertical segment going down to state 2. And we write it as 2 sub s to indicate that it is an isentropic expansion. Now we just recalled that the work that a real turbine produces is less than its isentropic counterpart. So where do you think state 2 for the real turbine is located? To the left or to the right of 2 sub s? Pause here for a second and think about it. Since turbine work is defined by this equation, and the y-axis shows us the change in enthalpy, that change would be this for the isentropic case, and smaller than that for the real case. This means that state 2 is to the right of 2 sub s. Otherwise, if it was to the left, the change in enthalpy would be higher, and the real work would be higher than the idealized work. So using this equation, we can write the work for the isentropic case in terms of H2 sub s, and with it, an equation for the isentropic efficiency of a turbine, eta sub t for turbine, as H1 minus H2 over H1 minus H2 s. Now in the case of compressors or pumps, we just established that the isentropic efficiency expression is reversed with the work required by a real compressor or pump in the denominator, since a real compressor or pump uses more work than the ideal isentropic case, and the work of an ideal isentropic compressor or pump on top. We give this efficiency a subscript C for compressing the fluid, gas or liquid. The diagram is the same, except that for a pump or compressor we begin in the low pressure isobaric curve and move up to pressurize the fluid. And just like in the previous case, the isentropic process would be a straight segment, this time going up. The thought process here is the same as before. Since the work required to run the real process has to be greater than the ideal one, that change in enthalpy for a real process has to be greater than the isentropic one, meaning that state 2 is to the right of 2 sub s. As for the expression, the isentropic efficiency for compressors and pumps would be H1 minus H2S over H1 minus H2. These two expressions are important because if, for example, we know what the isentropic efficiency of the device is, we can calculate the inlet or exit temperatures through the enthalpy values. And the temperatures are of course important in any process to fully define a state at any given stage in a more complex process or cycle. Let's look at a simple example related to isentropic efficiency here, where we're only using the expressions we derived today to calculate efficiency, and if you want to watch other examples on this topic, make sure to check out the links to those in the description below. Argon gas goes into an adiabatic turbine at 750 degrees Celsius and 1.6 megapascals at a rate of 75 kilograms per minute, and exits the turbine's exhaust at 180 kilopascals. If the power generated by this turbine is 330 kilowatts, what is its isentropic efficiency? 
Remember to pause here for a second and try to solve this problem yourself before watching the solution. Today we define the efficiency of a turbine as the work produced by it over the work it could theoretically produce if it was an isentropic process. The work of the real turbine we have, so we keep that as W dot. And since we established that the work of the isentropic process version can be written in terms of H2 sub S, W dot S is just H1 minus H2 S. Normally, since we have pressure and temperature at 1, we could find the entropy of state 1, S1, and since it's an isentropic process, S2 would be the same. Then, with S2 and the given value for P2, we could find H2. This would be H2S, since it's the H2 of the isentropic process. We would use state 1's properties to find H1, and with it, calculate W dot S to find the efficiency. However, argon is an ideal gas, and we just derived some isentropic relations for ideal gases in the previous lecture. The link to that specific section is in the description below, in case you haven't watched it or have forgotten about those relations. In this case, we will use the relation between temperature and pressure, since those are the properties we were given. And since we're calculating properties for the isentropic case, we'll add a subscript S to state two properties. We have both of the pressures and temperature 1, and all we're missing to solve for T2S is the specific heat ratio of argon. We look that up to find 1.667, and while we're here, we can also write down the specific heat Cp, which we will use in just a minute. We substitute the values, making sure that we use temperatures in Kelvin, and we find the exit temperature of argon for the theoretical isentropic process. And since the change in enthalpy of an ideal gas can be calculated with the specific heat, and we know that the specific heat of argon, an ideal gas, is constant and not a function of temperature, we substitute that value, the value of the two temperatures, and the mass flow rate in kilograms per second, not kilograms per minute, to calculate the work produced by the theoretical isentropic turbine. With this isentropic work value and the work value of the real given turbine, we can find the answer to the question, what is the isentropic efficiency? Values for isentropic efficiency are important because they tell you how close to the most ideal scenario the device is. In this case, for a turbine, isentropic efficiencies closer to 1 mean that the turbine is a good turbine and that its design is worth a higher price. If you want to watch other more complex examples on this topic, make sure to check out the links in the description below. There, you'll find links to the other lectures of the Thermo course as well as lectures and examples for other engineering courses like Statics, Mechanical Design, SolidWorks, Mechanics of Materials, and others. Thanks for watching!